What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Guns, and welcome to Keys to Winning PUBG Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I'm your host, Guns, and today we're actually going to be taking a look at one of the games that I played recently. The reason why I decided to go with this format and why I can go with this format now is because of the replay system, whereas before I had to be recording all the time. Now I can actually look back at games and I can tell you why I made certain decisions with examples of exactly why directly on the screen for you. So it makes more sense to you and you have a better understanding as to why I made certain decisions in those areas. We're also going to look at other players, players that lost fights, why they lost fights and how to prevent you from losing the fights in the same way to um, better condition you to do things uh, specific ways, just general mistakes that you don't want to make. So the first thing we're going to start off with is why I dropped where I dropped in this map. The plane goes from east to west, northeast to southwest, really, if you want to be technical about it, but east to west. And I decided to drop at Gatka. Now, why do I decide to drop at Gatka? Well, a good 50, 60 to 70 percent is going to be east of me, um, of the entire 100 players. About 70% of them are going to be over there to the eastern side, maybe even more, maybe up to 80%, because we have things like Mansion, Prison, uh, Poliana, School, Apartments, Razak, Pachinki, Ruins, we, we, you know, and then there's also the option of Hospital in Georgia Pool that we go right over top of uh, that are, are still within a good range for people to actually get to. So... The choice of Gatka dropping straight down on it, I mean, you look at all the people that are currently dropping here with me, it seems like a lot, but in total, there's maybe 15 to 20 people here total. Uh, and you know what, as a matter of fact, we can pause it and count. 14, this guy's DC'd, so 15. 15 people in total over on this side of the map, okay? That means the other 85, 84 people, so about 80%, is going to be east of me. Uh, that's why I chose to drop at Gatka. Now, as we're coming down, you always want to be looking around. You always want to be finding where people are at. I know Sid's over there. Um, I know he's the only other person that dropped here with me. Or I'm not sorry, Sid. Uh, Callahan. I know Callahan's over there. I also know where Sid went. Sid went to my west. Um, I know he's the only other person here with me in Gatka. When there's somebody else here with you in a town that you're going to be looting like Gatka, small settlements like this, get a gun and immediately find the person and kill them. Now... I go through and I loot this house just in case I can get helmet, armor, anything like that. I know he's got that house over there, which sometimes can have good stuff in it, but that's really all he's going to get through by the time I get this house. I'm a pretty quick looter, and something being a quick looter is something you want to have. So the first thing I want to do is find Callahan and kill him, and he presented a situation in which I could do that fairly easily, take him out just like... So I killed Callahan. I can free loot now. You always want to try to be in a state of free looting as fast as possible. Free looting means that you feel relatively safe. You're pretty confident you would hear or see anybody that comes up to you. Uh, and that you would be able to uh, handle that situation pretty easily or be aware of it very, very early on. Um, so you can loot pretty carelessly throughout. Now, you don't always want to loot carelessly. You always kind of want to be on alert, obviously. But you can relax a little bit more right now, okay? So we're going to run uh, along down here. I don't have any vehicles, didn't find any vehicles, so I'm in the circle, which is good. So my running is not going to be that bad. I'm not constantly on the clock here, but I still want to try to get ahead of the circle. In the early game, getting ahead of the circle is not a bad thing. In fact, it's a good thing. In the late game, you kind of want to ride the circle depending on the position, but we'll talk about that later on. So early game, if you can get ahead of the circle and get deep in, you're going to put yourself in a great position. But late game, you kind of want to ride with the circle. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about reasons for that when we get to the late game. So, I hear a car to my east. That's going to be Sid the Sloth. Now, I know I heard his car. I know it's over there. And I actually see it as we come up in between this tree. And I see him running. So, I know he's there. He doesn't see me right now. But, I land one shot. He knows that he's being shot at currently. He's watching this guy down below us to the east and that little sediment over there. I didn't know that. Now, why do I keep shooting even though he went prone? Well, I didn't know he went prone. He could have gone behind the bush, anything like that. He's been hit three times now. He's pretty lit. He's going to heal up, run back to his car. I catch a glimpse of him running back to his car whenever he's done healing and he gets up and books it. See, I saw him right there out of the side of the uh, right side of the scope. I know he's running to his car. So <clears throat> what I do is I go to this rock. Why do I go to the rock? Well, if he decides to rush me with his vehicle and I, for some reason, can't land the shots, I just step behind the rock, 
and I'm safe. Thankfully, I did land all the shots though, and Sid's now dead. If I for some reason wasn't able to land the shots, and Sid was going to try to run me down with his car, all I have to do is step left behind the rock, and Sid can't do anything to me. He has to drive out into the middle of the field where I can take more shots at him. If you're in a car, and you're being shot at, never, ever, ever drive towards the shots. It's the worst thing in the world you can do for players that are medium to high skill level, because they'll do exactly what I just did to you. They'll take their time, they'll line your shot up on your head, and they'll just continue to peck away at you until you're dead or out of your car. You know, um, that's one of the one of the more suicidal things you can do, especially for really good players, is drive straight at them. It's a dumb, dumb idea. So if you're getting shot at and you're in a car, never drive straight at it. Drive away from the shots and try to get cover. Try to put terrain or objects between you and the person, because it only takes a halfway decent shot to land those shots and we're going to see another uh, example of it uh, coming up soon here he's s probably semi aware of me being over here but not fully aware he knows there were shots in this direction but he makes the other mistake he drives in a perpendicular line to me he drives right beside me never do that either driving right beside somebody is also kind of a death sentence because all i have to do is hold the trigger down keep the gun level and spray across the top of the car as it moves with you leading a little bit obviously depending on how fast you're moving so we find a vehicle and uh find a bike we're gonna take this vehicle up over here to this little section here I decided to wait out the rest of the circle up in this area. I felt pretty safe here. I'd cleared out most of everything, and at this point, I'm looting the house a little bit for a little bit extra right now. I don't find too much, though. Um, so let's look at how people are coming in currently, as we can see in our cone of vision, or our circle of vision here. We got one other person, Gray Spectrum, who has gone all the way to the coast here. Uh, then we have four other people that are south or east of me. Now, remember what I said? 70 to 80% of the players are going to be to your east. Uh, and that's going to become really apparent the further we move on. If we fast forward a little bit, uh, look how much more busy that got. So we had, what, one, two, three. The fourth one's introduced shortly after. There's Sneaky Pete. And then if we go forward just a little bit more, look at that. Lovecraft, Cheeky Breaky, Kinja Time, Sneaky Pete, Lieutenant Crunch, uh, Dan Dante Zilla. You know, they've all pushed up like that. And it's going to get more and more busy over there the further we go into this timeline. Um, people are going to start killing each other. So... Being where I was at was probably the better choice here because the only person I currently have to contend with right now is Gray Spectrum. Uh, let's fast forward a little bit and we're actually going to hop on with Gray Spectrum. We're going to watch him and what he does from this point on because this is the next person that I killed. He's got a loot package. He has an AWM-24 and he has a scar suppressed with a red dot, okay? So he's clearing out, making sure this whole west, northwest, north section of the circle is clear. He's doing a lot of this with this uh, Scar L. Occasionally, you'll see him whip out the AWM. Personally, when you're dealing with a field like this, that's this large, the likelihood that anybody's going to rush up on you is pretty low, um, and the AWM's a huge amount of damage. So my advice is when you're just scouting, looking for people, you're not really taking long-distance shots, slap an ACOG on it, okay? You slap an ACOG on it, you can still take a shot at ranged. If you really have to, you can swap over to the 8X, okay? Um, I always recommend, you know, learning how to hot swap reticles really quickly inside your backpack. Now, Gray Spectrum doesn't know I'm here. He's still trying to scout this area out with his Scar L, not his most powerful weapon. The AWM is a one-hitter quitter in a ton of scenarios. And this is the first time he sees me. Now, first off, he takes two seconds to notice me. And second off, he whiffs a ton of shots here, okay? Let's backtrack just a little bit here. So he notices I'm on screen and viewable at about 25 seconds, okay? So it's 22, 25, there I am, okay? Let's see how long it takes him to notice me. That's one second. That's two seconds. Ah, there he goes. He took a, two, a, whole, a whole two seconds to notice me here. So... That is a lack of uh, attention and awareness. You always want to be scanning the terrain, always want to be looking. Objects that are moving immediately attract your attention. Two whole seconds to notice somebody that's moving and then your attention uh, goes to them. I hate to bang on you, Gary Spectrum, but that is really, really slow. A whole two seconds? I'll give you a second. A second's reasonable. 
half a second to 0.75 seconds. I mean, that's just about attention awareness. So he may have been distracted, not paying attention to that or something else. Um, you just got to train your eyes to notice things that are moving in your peripheral vision if you're looking at one part of the screen or the other. He makes more mistakes, a lot of mistakes here, which is why I won this fight. Gray Spectrum should have 100% won this fight. I had no right to win this fight whatsoever, but he made a lot of mistakes on top of each other that compounded and caused him to lose this fight. So he sees me. What's he do first? He doesn't take his time on his first shot. He misses pretty clear left and a target that is, oh, 40, 50 meters away. I mean, really clear left. Okay, so he misses the first shot. Does he calm down for the second shot? No, he immediately takes a second shot and a third. Finally hits me on the fourth. He's still panicking, so he's just kind of firing full auto here, okay? So he did not take his time to nail a shot. I'm moving relatively slow. If you see somebody in front of you moving relatively slow, slow down, calm down, take your time land a headshot a single headshot with something like a scar an akm and m16 is going to give you a huge life lead on the person in the fight it's going to ruin their helmet and you're not going to have to land nearly as many shots so take your time land that first headshot you're already way ahead in the fight the person you shot is going to be panicked they're going to take a, it's going to take them a second to figure out where they're getting shot from but when they finally do get their bearings they are going to be super low on health and you're going to have a huge advantage on them. So slow down. Take that headshot. Don't rush. Just calm and breathe when you want to when you find somebody and they're unaware of you. The second mistake that he made was not using his AWM. If you have somebody that is unaware, you could take the AWM will one shot somebody with a level 2 helmet. Now, I'll show you an example of this coming up. I go for a headshot and I take the body shot instead because he started moving. But you go for the headshot and if you can't get the headshot, you take the body shot instead. Because the body shot is going to ruin that person, ruin their chest armor. You know, even with an 8x and you're overzoomed, put a red dot on it, put an ACOG on it, hot swap anything to it and take the shot. You're going to do a lot better. So he panicked, he missed. He reloads with 26 rounds left. 26 rounds left. It takes four shots from a Scar L level two body armor to kill somebody, okay? Don't ever reload if you have this many shots in your magazine because he's gonna reload right now and watch what happens. I peek him. I know he's reloading. That's one shot, two shots. He crosses over, three shots. His armor's ruined, four shots. Let's watch it from my perspective this time, okay? I have no idea he's behind me, remember, okay? Two, three. Three shots and he missed. He hit one shot. I realize I'm going to go down this hill and try to get cover from him, put this tree between me and him. He's lost visual of me. He's reloading, and I know this because I can see him doing it. Two. That's two. Third shot fourth shot fourth shot was an arm shot which is why it didn't kill him so some people are gonna say oh you shot him four times and he didn't die i shot him three times in the chest and i hit him once in the arm um and if you look his health is so minusculely low whenever i shoot him in the arm look how little health he has that's an arm shot uh so the arm shot does significantly less damage i can breathe on him and he'll die at this point and uh, he still has not finished reloading yet. Now he's finished reloading and he's shooting again. And all I had to do was hit him once. So, look, he almost got me to half health. He landed two shots on me. If he had taken the time to get the headshot, he might have actually won that fight. So, slow down, take the time to get the headshot, you'll be fine. Moral of the story here. That dude had an AWM. I am looking pretty fucking Gucci right now, okay? AWM, 8X. We're gonna push up here. I hear shots. I know shots are coming in this direction. It's from Noah Boa. He has a car 98. He's sniping at Lovecraft and Kinja Time down there to the east, uh, northeast uh, at about 75 degrees. Um, so, I, I know he's here. I hear him. I can't see him. He doesn't know I'm here, though. 
So, uh, I'm gonna use the distance between us to not alert him making noise and try to just take him out with an AWM. Now, I don't see him here. It's because he's prone, okay? He's prone right now and hiding in the grass. I can't actually see him, but he's right there in front of me on that tree. So I'm looking like this dude's gotta be here somewhere, right? Now, the reason why, and this is, again, this is a, a, an attention deficit on my part. I was not actively looking for moving targets because I'd like, look, you can plainly see this whole area right in front of me. He's not there. So when he stands up, it takes me a second because there was nothing there. I'm ignoring that area. That just proves that you do not ever ignore any area with your peripheral vision. I've put that out of my mind and I'm just like, okay, he's not there. Why am I worrying about it? And I see movement off to my Northeast 60 degrees. It's those two guys that are shooting at. So I'm trying to use a little bit of triangulation here and figure out, okay, if he's shooting at those guys down there, I'm trying to see a side of this shit, right? He's just prone behind this tree laying in front of me. So I got him now. Now, I go for the headshot. You can see me coming up, right, riding the scope up on his body. We're going to actually slow this down. So I notice him. I zoom in. You can see me going for the headshot. I start to ride the reticle up his body. I want this headshot. Level 2 helmet, he's dead. One tap. He is wearing level 3 body armor, okay? But he starts moving. I know he starts moving. It's a little bit more difficult to hit a moving headshot, especially at this close of a range with an 8x. I'm over zoomed right here like crazy, okay? So I'm just going to take the body shot. And this is actually an arm shot with level 3 armor. So I'm doing reduced damage from the full 100%. Chest is 110%. And it's through level 3 body armor. Look how much health he has left. 60. I took 65 to 70% of his health. He only has, you know, 35, 30% left. All right? I go for the second shot to finish him off real quick because I think I can hit a body shot while he's moving. I can't close, but no cigar. Look how close that was. I mean, like it probably nicked his backpack, but no cigar. All right. So he's hurt bad. He's going for cover around this tree. He probably knows where I'm at and I know he knows where I'm at. So I'm going to whip out my M uh, M4 and I'm just going to start trying to spray him down. Now, I had such a huge life lead over him in that fight, he had zero chance whatsoever, especially once he got target acquisition for me. That's where, going back to Gary Spectrum, that's what he did wrong. When he noticed me, he did not shoot, he did not slow down, take his time, and then go for the correct shot. The correct shot would have been a headshot or body shot with the AWM, because he then has a 60% life lead in the fight, and that fight's way easier for him. Those two shots he landed with the scar would have won him the fight. So I'm looking around, I'm considering positioning right now. Positioning is always such a huge thing in this game, especially towards the end. Now, I know that the circle's ending here now. I see that. So I'm going to start moving this direction, okay? You don't... Crossing the road or being near the road is kind of bad because you have one side that you're going to be definitely exposed on and the other side you may or not, may not be depending on the terrain. However, I know that these barriers are here, so I'm going to use these barriers to my advantage to give me cover from Pachinki, okay? Or, I'm sorry, Primorsk. The rest of the players... I, I, at this time, and I'm wrong right now, but at this time I'm thinking there's maybe one person on my side, you know, on this western side here. There's actually two on the southwestern side. And there's probably the other three on this eastern side here. We were talking about circle riding earlier. Why is it a good idea to ride the circle in the late game towards the top 10, but not in the early game? In the early game, if you're riding the circle, you're constantly running, constantly moving. If you don't have a vehicle, you're going to get caught by the circle uh, sometimes, and then you're going to have to expend uh, meds, boosters, things like that to, st to stow away the damage from the, the, the damage from the circle to get rid of it, you know, to heal yourself back to full. Late game, it's a good thing because the circle moves relatively uh, slower compared to early game. You know, early game, a circle moves very, very fast. Here, it moves kind of slow. Now, I'm pre-boosting right now. It's always smart to pre-boost. If you get into a fight, um, that little extra boost of health that you can take beforehand may be the difference between a win and a loss. It really, really, really might be. Not kidding. It's happened a ton to me. The boost has saved my life. Uh, I switched the ACOG onto the AWM because at this point, if we look at the circle, the max distance I'm shooting is 400 meters, um, you know, from side to side, all the way across 400 meters is the absolute max. Um, 
Most of the people I'm going to be shooting are going to be between 1 and 200 meters. Uh, 1 to 300 meters right now because they're all kind of circled around here. So uh, the 8x is just going to be over zoom for pretty much everything except for 400 meters away. It's going to hit those guys over there. Uh, and there is a scenario where I have to use that. But the ACOG is going to be better overall here, okay? So uh, this again comes to map awareness. Um, and terrain, knowing the terrain, knowing the area around you, knowing the map. I know that there's a hill here by Primorsk, okay? I know it's really high in the center point. I know it's down here. I know there's some rocks around here. And then I know it slopes back down and goes on to the coast, okay? This around here is kind of the high point of this hill right here along in here, okay? This is the low end that sweeps down. There's no cover along here. And there's a road. This is probably the most cover maybe down here but there's only a few trees down here okay so you really really want to think of where should i go in this scenario and if it means pushing other people pushing other players running into them and having to kill them that's something you got to do to have the better position to win the final game and not too many people are really expecting the side flank the side circle flank going around the sides like this um because one they're trying to look in front of them most of the people are going to be in this 90 degree cone of vision in front of them okay they're going to be out this way right this little like if you look at uh one eyed uh zipper snake here uh a 90 degree cone of vision here all other three players are right in front of him okay so especially if they hear shots or action like that coming from that direction they're going to be looking forward it's hard to look forward and look left and look right. So these kind of hanging around the outside of the circle flanks, really, really good for you, okay? Uh, Zipper Snake's going to take shots at Dante here. He is going to kill Dante eventually. Um, so where I'm at right now is we are coming up to this side of this hill. See, there's Primorsk. Um, and I know the circle is going to move in right behind me, so I need cover on this side of the hill. And this rock happens to just be in. So, this gives me cover from the rest of the hill. It gives me double cover. In fact, a tree I can use as kind of a barrier. Lieutenant Crunch. I'm immediately put shots on him with this AWM. Why? He's a long distance away. And, uh, I'm going to kill him here. Uh, I do see the other person, but I don't kill him because I'm, uh, I tried to time my shot there and let Lieutenant Crunch kill him. That didn't happen, unfortunately. Um... We're going to take a look at this again from up here. Uh, I was hoping that Lieutenant Crunch would take the really, really easy kill here. Uh, I was letting him ADS on the person, and uh, I let them take the shot, but he just didn't do it here. We'll slow this down so you can see. He lines up. Car shot. He hits him in the back of the... the, the he hits him in the back. Uh, Cheeky Breaky turns around to take him out, and I'm like, alright, Crunch, fuck it. You could have made this a twofer. Nope, Crunch is down. Cheeky Breaky's still out there. He is damaged, though, which is a bonus for me, absolutely. I know where one of the three people are- oh, I know where two- I'm one of the three. I know where one of the other two players is at. I do not know where the other person is. However, I did hear shots to my south-southeast from Primorsk. So I think he's over there, but given the amount of time he's had, he could have moved- I mean, this whole circle right here, he could be anywhere around here, and there's some coves I can't see right now. So, not too keen for looking for this dude, but he's going to eventually come to me. So, I know where Cheeky Breaky is, I just killed Lieutenant Crunch, I need to find this other player. Now, is there a chance that he could have wrapped all the way around? Eh, not really, but I'm going to look. It's a chance right now, okay? It's a chance. So, especially if you kill somebody down in Primorsk, or, you know, maybe both the players died down there, but that's the last place that I heard shots. So, I know Cheeky Breaky's still over there. I haven't seen him move. It's a pretty wide open field. Um, he hasn't really had enough time to move if he wanted to. I don't know that One-Eyed Zipper Snake's moving up on me aggressively as he is until I see his head right there. And he was an easy and quick kill. Why was he such an easy and quick kill? Well, let's see what he's doing. He's coming up, alright? He's moving a little slowly here, okay? This is the biggest mistake he makes right here. He's moving in this direction. He sees my head briefly. He didn't notice it. Sometimes people don't notice things. He's not looking in the direction that he's moving. He is moving to this northeastern side of the circle... He's not looking there. He is not paying attention to where he's going, and he's moving over top of a blind hill. Now, what gave it away is the footsteps that I heard, but when you're moving over top of a blind hill, 
You absolutely need to look where you're going, and he's dead before he can even turn an ADS on me, okay? So, always look where you're going, okay? So he's dead, nice and easy, right? I know where the last person is. I know he has to move. Now, last to move with the circle. Why is this good, riding the circle in the top 10? Because if you're last to move with the circle, this means that you can shoot people that have to move with the circle early, uh, or that choose to move with the circle early, like Cheeky Breaky does. The smoke gives him away here. I step out for the shot. And that's all she wrote. Well, I hope this guide helped you guys. I hope there was a lot of good scenarios and situa situations in here. Uh, if you did like the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications. It helps uh, us a lot. If you enjoyed this video in this particular format, please leave a like or comment down below. Um, if you think there are things I could change to make this format better, tell me down in the comments below as well. Like I said, this is a new kind of format I want to try because it's live demonstrations based on what I see in a game that I played. I'm telling you the reasons why I did something to better help you understand those kinds of mechanics and those kinds of situations of the game. If you guys feel like that works, that's great. We'll kind of compress it down and work it and make it a better format. If you guys want to uh, watch me live, you can do so over at twitch.tv forward slash G-U-N-Z-G-A-M-E-S. You can support me on Patreon on a monthly basis. That's in the description down below. And you can listen to me rant about stupid shit on Twitter like I do every day. I'm Guns. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. GG.